This here is a lot of salt, and yet it's nowhere near as salty as I am at the moment. As you've probably guessed from the title of this video, this is going to be the story about how an established brand actually took my cosplay image and used it to sell their own product. Now, before we begin, I'm going to tell you this. I am not going to be naming and shaming who this company was because of one main factor. It doesn't matter. This happens way too often to cosplayers and by no means is this an isolated event. See, cosplayers will take a lot of time, they will spend a lot of money to create a well-constructed, good-looking costume and then they will even pay someone to take a really great, clear photo of it. And it only takes a quick Google search to find that image and then a click to download it. And the thing is, it's not just cosplayers, it's artists in general. They have their artwork ripped off and then sold as an inferior product. Fellow costumer Bernadette Banner had this happen to her and she made a wonderful video detailing her experience with it. I'll link it up here and in the comments below. In this video, she takes her costume and the inferior copy of it and reviews them side by side. It gives you a very clear understanding of what you see versus what you'll get. It all started when a follower of mine, Jessica, alerted me through Facebook Messenger through my page that a company had taken my photo and was using it to sell their own product. I clicked the link that Jessica gave and sure enough, there was my cosplay photo. This is the photo in question. It is of my Mad Hatter cosplay that I completed back in late 2016. The design is by a Divin artist by the name of Justin McTwisp. Now, Justin has deleted his DeviantArt page, but before he did, I managed to get permission that I could use his image to recreate this cosplay. However, what the company did was that they actually put my photo next to their product. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad that they did this because you could clearly see that you were not going to get the same product. We'll delve a little deeper into that later on. Now, I did have a moment where I thought, hmm, should I do a Bernadette banner and order my own costume? But then I thought, no, I don't want to spend nearly $500 Australian for a knockoff of my costume. I don't want to give these people any of my money. So what I did instead was I composed a message. The message basically said, that's my cosplay. I made that. I'm the model. And via remote, I took the photo. I did not give you permission to use my image. Please remove it immediately. I then sent this message through every means of communication that I could via email that was listed on their website, their messaging system through their website and through messenger on their Facebook page. My main hope was that at least one of the messages would get to them. Then I waited. Luckily for me, I didn't have to wait too long. I actually got a response within 24 hours, which is unheard of in these types of situations. The company apologized. They had made the costume for a client who had supplied my image as the reference image. They didn't realize that the client had not had permission to use it and they were removing the listing right away. They concluded that they would be stricter with reference images in the future. As I mentioned before, this is clearly not the same product and I want to break it down because if you buy your cosplays online, there are certain things that you should be looking out for. For example, if the costume you're looking at is highly detailed, you might want to double check the price because a key thing here is if there is a lot of detail in the cosplay that you're looking at and the price does not reflect the work that goes into that, you're probably not going to get that particular product. So let's first talk about the hat. The hat is a completely different shape to mine. It has a different color sash around it. Theirs is blue, mine is pink, and mine actually had ribbon embroidery on the base of the sash. There's also no feather, and there's no hat pin, and there's no patch. Moving on to the costume now. Firstly, the bow tie. The bow tie is little and is plain. Mine is a big tie with a very detailed pattern on it. The vest itself is a plain blue flannel where mine was a taffeta and a satin that was then appliqued into diamonds with satin stitching to finish it off. 
In theirs, there is no undershirt and there is no fingerless gloves either. So now onto the coat. Theirs is listed as being made out of wool. Mine was made out of silk. And also on theirs, there is no detailing. On mine, I had gold trim on the cuffs and I also had a taffeta handkerchief out of one pocket and ribbons out of the other. Not to mention that I finished it all off with a sash of thread spools. Moving on to the skirt now, one thing I will say is that the construction looks to be quite similar, as well as the colour, but the fabrics are completely different and they also didn't include the ribbon detailing which is featured on mine. And finally, the petticoat. The petticoat for them is said to be one layer of organza and eight layers of pink mesh. Mine was 13 layers with a lining and the layers were made up of orange chul and two different types of pink organza. Also, each of those layers were actually split into two, a top section and a lower section. And the lower section was longer than the top section so that it could be ruffled down to create the volume that is needed for that particular petticoat. At least one costume has been made using my costume as the reference. I know that, but here's the thing. How many more have been made? Zero? A hundred? I just don't know. The other thing is how long has this costume been listed up on this website? I made this costume back in late 2016. Has it been up all that time? Although I am glad that the listing and the image have been taken down, the point is, this should never have gone up in the first place. Obviously, I am still upset by this for two reasons. The first reason is that I'm not the only one that this has happened to. And the second reason is that this is not the first time that my work has been stolen. In the last year alone, I've had three different cases where individuals or companies have taken my video, downloaded them, and then re-uploaded them as their own video once to YouTube and twice to Instagram. And every time that they've been called out, they've said the exact same thing. I didn't realize that what I was doing was wrong, which frankly is a load of bull. I will say this though, the cosplay and costuming community, along with my supporters, have been freaking amazing. All of the times that I have had this happen to me, I have felt like I have had, had an army of supporters behind me screaming the injustice. And I can't thank you enough for that. Because at the time that I was vulnerable, you guys had my back. And we need more of it. If you see that a photo or a video has been taken by a creator and it has been re-uploaded onto a website or an Instagram page or a YouTube channel or anywhere. You need to let the creator know and you need to say to the poster, hey, this is not okay. You have stolen this work. In conclusion, the sad thing is, this is not the first time, nor will it be the last time. But I, for one, am not going to let it stop me creating cosplay or content because I love what I do and I love you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.